Assalamu alaikum. I hope everyone is doing fine. In this lecture series, we will be talking about the design of columns, including short columns and slender columns. And then we will be designing columns in sway and non sway frames. The book we are following is Reinforced Concrete Mechanics and Design. Our content uh, from the column section includes uh, introduction and behavior of columns, combined axial and bending, design of short columns, design of slender columns, and design of columns in sway and non-sway frames. All this content is taken from chapters 11 and 12 of McGregor's Reinforced Concrete Mechanics and Design. Coming to the loading cases that we can expect in design of columns, there are basically two kinds of loading. One is the axial only loading and the second one is combined axial and bending. In the axial loading, we only have the applied load at zero eccentricity, meaning it is applied at the center of the column and it will only cause compressive forces in the column. So our concern will mostly be the compressive capacity of the column because the column is most probably going to fail by crashing. In the second case of combined axial and bending, there could be two possibilities. The first possibility is that the same load is applied at an eccentricity and the second the load is applied along with the moment. Both these cases will result in combined axial deformation and also cause the column to bend. So in the first case, we are mostly concerned about the nominal load capacity that is the compressive load capacity of the column. And in the second case, we are also concerned about the moment taking capacity of our column. So in the design phase, what we usually do is that we make sure that the capacity of any structural member is greater than the applied forces. So in case of the axial loading, our nominal load Pn, that is the capacity of the column should be greater than Pu, that is the applied load, than the applied moment. In the case of combined axial and bending, we also have to make sure that the uh, moment capacity mn is greater than the applied moment mu so this is the basic principle we have to keep in mind while designing any structural member applied forces are calculated from the analysis softwares like etabs and sap whereas the capacity of a structural member depends on the shape material and if we have any reinforcement provided ACA code provides a list of different load combinations that should be tested for designing any structural member. So for example in the first case uh, it just includes dead load so 1.4 times the dead load. That means that our structural member should be designed for at least that load. Now there are a number of load combinations here. So we have to calculate them all and then we choose the load combination that gives us the highest load. If we are talking about the axial capacity of a column then we can calculate that using the formula of nominal load carrying capacity which is 0.85 f'c times uh, area of concrete plus area of steel into fy. The first part of this equation is load carrying capacity or the compressive strength of concrete. ACA suggests that we use a design axial strength 5 pn of compression members uh, that shall not be taken greater than 5 pn max. Phi in this case is given on the right side. It is 0.9 for tension controlled members and 0.6 or 0.75 for the compression control. So if we have spiral reinforcement then we will take phi as 0.75 and for all other kinds of members we have 0.65. For the scope of this course we can use the value of 0.945. In the section 10361 concrete members with spiral reinforcement the value of 5 pn max is 
as shown in equation 10 1 and with the tire reinforcement the value 5 pn max is shown in 10 2 now on this slide we have three values of pn one is the normal pn without any strength reduction factor that will be the actual nominal capacity of any section the second is 5 pn that is the design axial strength that we can just calculate by multiplying pn with 5 that we are taking as 0.9 in our case third value is 5 pn max 5 pn max value again multiplied by 0.855 in case of spiral and 0 0.805 in case of tight reinforcement so you should know the difference between these two first is the nominal moment second is the design axial strength and the third is the maximum nominal strength of a section so the design axial strength shall not be greater than 5 pn max so if you are now given a column with known dimensions and reinforcement and you are asked to find out if this column is adequately designed or not comparing that pu to the nominal capacity of the section so nominal capacity of the section will be pn value but we are checking if the column is adequately designed so for that we are concerned about the value 5 pn that includes the safety factor for the design of this column so we will calculate 5 pn then see if that 5 pn value is greater than the applied load pu or not next up we have aci code provision for the strength reduction factors in case of moment and axial forces the 5 value is uh, from 0.65 to 0.90 just as in this slide uh, if we look at the right side the 5 value range is from 0.65 to 0.9 the 5 factor for shear and torsion is taken as 0.75 but for shear you have to look at the additional requirements given in 21 to 4 of ACI code in the case of combined axial and bending once the column starts bending due to the applied moment there is a reduction in strength of column due to the buckling this reduction in strength is called the slenderness effect and the slenderness depends on the length cross section and the applied moments slenderness effects that is the reduction in strength shall be accounted for during the design if it causes significant reduction in strength based on slenderness there are two types of columns short columns and slender columns slenderness effects are ignored in short columns while they are accounted for in slender columns according to ACI slenderness effects shall be permitted to be neglected in the following cases for compression members not braced against side sway when KLU by R value is less than 22 and secondly for compression members braced against side sway when KLU over R is less than 34 minus 12 into M1 over M2 in this case m1 over m2 are the top and bottom moments at the ends of the columns lu is the length k is the effective length factor and r is the radius of gyration effective length factor k depends on the end stiffnesses of the column the effective length factor k can be calculated from this graph where psi a and psi b are the end stiffnesses of the column we will do an example about this later in the design of sway and non sway frames in case of reinforced concrete columns there are basically three types of reinforcements that can be used the first one is longitudinal bars with lateral ties second is longitudinal bars with continuous spirals and third is composite compression members reinforced longitudinal first two cases are commonly used in practice but in case of high-res buildings and special cases we can also consider composite compression members for design ties and spirals have two basic uses first one is to serve as support for the longitudinal bars and second is to increase the compressive strength of concrete by providing the confinement to the inner core this confinement contributes to increase in strength and ductility of the concrete compression member as you can see in this graph that spiral columns allow a longer longitudinal strain as compared to the tight columns that means that spiral columns are more ductile than the tight columns so in scenarios where you need more ductility 
you might prefer spiral columns as compared to tight columns because tight columns are brittle whereas spiral columns are more ductile here are some requirements for spirals and ties that you should go through in your own time and we will be using these in the design of ties and spirals in the upcoming lectures now let's go through a couple of examples in the first one a non-cylinder tied column is subjected to axial load only it has the geometry shown in figure and is reinforced with three number nine bars on each of the two faces Calculate the nominal and design axial load strength for the column. First thing you should notice in this example is that the column is not cylinder and second that it is a tight column and third that it is only subjected to axial loads. So we are not concerned about the moments for this particular example. The geometry and the reinforcements are given and we just have to calculate nominal and design axial load. As we discussed earlier, the nominal strength is the PN value whereas the design axial load strength is the PN value multiplied by the load reduction factor. So to calculate the nominal strength we will calculate the value of PN and to calculate the value of design axial strength by PN we will use the strength reduction factor of 0.9. After calculating the 5 PN value we have to calculate the 5 PN max value. So simply multiply that value by 0 0.805 as our column was tight so we will use 0 0.805 equation that is equation 10-2. The second example is also similar to the first example with only difference being that this column is a spiral column. So while calculating the 5 pn max value we will use the equation corresponding to the spiral column. These two examples are the common scenario in which the dimensions and the reinforcement of a column are given and we just have to check if the nominal capacity of a column is greater than the applied loads so we will calculate the value of 5 pn max and then compare it to the value pu and if 5 pn max is greater than pu then our column is adequately designed coming to the end of this introduction lecture when designing or analyzing columns for adequacy you should have these five questions in your mind the first one what are the applied loads and moments these you will get from the structural analysis second what is the material and the shape of the column third is the column slender or short fourth is it tied or spiral the fourth one is important because our strength reduction factors depend on this value fifth what is the nominal and moment capacity of the column so again these will be calculated from the ACI code values so nominal capacity will be different from the design capacity nominal capacity is PN whereas the design capacity is 5 PN max that will include the strength reduction factors so far we have only talked about the axial load in the next lecture we will talk about the combined axial and bending and then we will also go towards the design of column where the reinforcement and dimensions of a column are unknown and we just know the applied loads go through these basic concepts in chapter 11 of the book before we continue to the next lecture thank you